everybody. I'm Lynn Cher, also known as Red Grape Jones. This is the Red Grape Jones Music Channel. Today, I'm gonna share with you three ways to optimize your experience using Ableton Live 11. The first thing I'm gonna show you is how to configure the Ableton browser, primarily the category section and the collection section, so you can get what you need to, so you can get to what you need to more efficiently. Now, if you are brand new to Ableton, this is the browser. If you don't see it, chances are, it's because you just need to click this little arrow here. Boom, there's your browser. So I'm gonna show you how to edit this collections and this category section. Now, if I hover right to the right of collections, there's the edit button. So I'm gonna hit that and you'll see all these little orange boxes with checks. Now, you'll see here my categories, right? I've got favorites, famina, not Bach, green, instruments, EQs, and kicks. So if I hit green, look, I don't have anything there. I don't need it, it's kind of in the way. So all I need to do is uncheck the orange box. I'll hit done and it's gone. Now I just have my favorites, Famina, not, I have all my other categories, but not the one that's taking up space. So I could do the same thing for this category section. I just hit next to categories, I hover, I see edit, Let's see, I don't use MIDI effects that much and I don't use Max for Live that much. So I'm gonna uncheck those, hit done, and they are gone from the browser. Now they're just not uh, just getting rid of any unwanted congestion. Now this is a super cool shortcut to help move things into your collections area. So let's say I'm looking for a kick drum and I find this one and I really like it. So if I wanna put it in my favorite section, well, favorite is number one on my collection list. All I have to do is hit number one. And you'll see this little red, little red box appear. Now say I want it in the kicks um, folder as well. So if I count one, two, three, four, five, six. Kicks is number six on that list. I hit number six and voila, I've got two boxes. Now, let's go back here to favorites. All my uh, favorites here, I've got my kicks, I've got atmosphere. So say I'm like, eh, you know what? I don't really like this kick right here anymore. It's not my favorite. So I hit one and now it's removed from the favorite tab. I think it's the coolest shortcut. The second thing I'm gonna tell you is how to change where you store your Ableton user library and also your live packs. So I'm going to hit, okay, well, oh, I hate on that. So you can either go up here to live and hit preferences. I prefer to hit command comma to get some control comma for PC, and it takes me to my preferences. So I'm already in library. So all you need to do is go under content locations, location of user library, I hit browse. Now I go here to elements, it's my external drive. And you see your Ableton user library 2024. Let's pretend like I just created that folder, right? Boom, that's my new folder. I hit open, and now my Ableton projects and user library is set up here. The other thing you can do is move where you install your pack. So go here, installation, folder for packs, hit browse. So again, I'm gonna go here. I created a folder called Ableton Packs open. Now all my packs, I could also keep plugins, anything that takes up space. So what this does is it just clears up the burden of all those sound files on my laptop. 
The other thing that's really cool with Ableton Live 11 is that there is a template section under categories. And there's these, so it comes with these four sort of template options. There's a podcast template. There's a demo and sketch, an eight track recording. It's just like eight audio tracks. So to create a template of, of your own. So say like for me, I tend to work with more MIDI files. I've already created one, two, three, four, five MIDI channels and on and two audio. Not saying I want to, I could add any kind of, any plugins, any effects and say I did all that. Now I'm ready to save my template. Go up to file, save live template as. So this one I already created. I'm going to call it my template, my temp one. Boom. That's my template. So now when I go here, my temp one. Now let's say I want to make some changes. So this is my temp one. So let's say I want to add an audio track. Let's say I want to add, let's say I want to add a drum rack to one of my MIDI tracks. And let's say I want to add a little reverb. Let's say I, I adore this concert hall reverb. I'm going to put that there. So let's say I want to save this as a new template and I want it to replace the earlier version I had. So I go up here, file, save live template, save as live template. So I'm gonna keep my temp one, even though you'll see there's also one here, cause watch, if I hit return, Ableton asks me if I wanna overwrite it. I do. Now all the changes have been uh, saved to my temp one. You could also create a template and have that be your default template. So to do that, you go to your template, double click, and then hit save default live set. And then I know it's my default template because it has this little check here, but I don't really want to do that. I like the regular default. So I'm going to save that as my default live set. Oh yeah, real quick, if you want to change the names for these, uh, this collections area, all you need to do is click on the tab, double click, and then hit rename, and then you could change it to, you know, whatever, whatever you want it to. Well, I hope this was useful to you. If it was, please like this video and make sure you subscribe to my channel. Uh, it'll really helps me out and you'll be notified when I release more videos. Thank you so much for being here. As always, if you have any questions, leave them in the comment section below and I'll be back with more useful content about music, Ableton, piano, singing, songwriting. I mean, I'm just keeping the net wide because I do many things and I know uh, about a lot of things. So I'll talk to you soon. Bye.